Hello and welcome again to Web Learning, where knowledge is shared. Today I have a very special guest for my AR, one of their support engineers that's going to explain to you today on how IAR is working with ST microcontrollers. For today's demonstration we use the STM32429 discovery board. This discovery board has an LCD screen on it and has many other features that are not possible to show when using the STM32L that I've been using till now. To follow this project, you first need to open a new CubeMX project. If you haven't seen how to use the CubeMX, I suggest to start with the first video on this YouTube channel that clearly explains all the details and all the features in the CubeMX. For today's tutorial, I'll do it really quickly. So if you don't know how to use the STM32 CubeMX, it is suggested to pause the video now, go and see the other video and come back at the later stage. For those of you that know the STM32 CubeMX, I'll start a new project, I'll go to the board selector, I'll choose the F4, and I'll choose the F499 discovery. As you can see, most of the pins are already populated for all the connections that are already on the board. For today's tutorial, we'll only need a free RTOS, clock configuration, we'll run at 180 MHz, configuration, everything is fed. We don't need to do anything. We'll open a new project. We'll give it a name. Choose the IAR. Go to code generator. Copy only necessary libraries and set all three pins as to analog. Now that the project is finished rendering, I'll hand over the tutorial to the IAR support guy. Enjoy. Hi, my name is David Kjellberg. I'm a field application engineer at IR Systems. Today I will show you a quick demo of, of how to use uh, the IR Embedded Workbench for ARM together with the uh, ST Discovery Board, uh, in this case for TM32F429 device. So we have uh, created a quick sample project uh, with the STM32 Cube software and added free artos to that as well. So what you see here is the IDE itself. So I'll start with showing you a few key options that you might want to pay attention to. So the first thing I'll do is I will go into the project options. So I'll double click here. It takes me into the general options first for, for this project. So as you can see, we have the Cortex-M4 core, we have the device, the STM32F429 device, but uh, if I click this button, I can also see that for ST we have uh, support for many different uh, devices. So regardless of which one you use, uh, we probably can support you. The other settings that you might want to look at when creating a project is uh, the C and C++ compiler settings. So paying attention to what language uh, you have set. The default is to use uh, C according to the 2011 C standard. Uh, but we also support C89 and uh, the C++ 2014 standard. Uh, you could set uh, the options to, to be auto here, uh, meaning that the compiler will look for if it's a .c file or a .cpp file. Uh, for today's demo, we will use C and the C11 language. Another tab that could be of importance here is uh, the optimization tab. So in this case, we have this set at high optimization to optimize for size. So we have a compiler which optimizes really good for either size or speed. You can set also to balanced if, if you want to have a, a more balanced setting. Uh, however, when uh, debugging, we do recommend to start with a low uh, level of optimization uh, for just for the debug. You will get better correlation between your C code and the disassembled code. Going to the preprocessor tab, uh, you will find all the uh, include directories that you need for your project. In this case, the STM32 cubes where I have already created everything I need here, so I don't have to do anything else. Another section that uh, is important is uh, the link section, meaning that uh, you will have to make sure that you have the correct uh, link configuration file. So in this case, we're going to run from flash and like with the other settings, we have already the, the linker configuration file from, from the STM32Cube software created. 
Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, we will use the ST Discovery Board for the demo today. That one has the included ST-Link debug functionality. So in the debugger settings, uh, in this case, we have to select the ST-Link. Uh, it is already pre-selected and configured here for us. But um, as you can see, we also support other types of probes. IR, we, ha we have our own debug probe example. You can use the IJET. But most of the functionality will work also using the, the ST-Link that we will uh, use today. So for pre-RTOS, we do support RTOS awareness in the debugger. So you may want to go to the plugins tab of the debugger settings, enable the free RTOS awareness uh, plugin for debugging. Next, I'll go to the ST-Link settings, and I just want to make sure that I have SWD enabled here, uh, and also I want to set the automatic uh, serial wire output clock frequency. So now I'm done with my settings. I'm ready to run. So what? I'll do, I'll just simply push the download and debug button. In this case, it will first check if it needs to build uh, also the application, as it will, will do now because we just uh, created everything. So I'll, I'll push this, it saves the project information and start uh, building the application. So you can see in the build window everything that happens. So it goes through all the uh, files, it uh, compiles everything and links everything together. And now uh, we aut automatically uh, enter into the debug view. So first of all, you can of course see the editor window here with your C files. So we have the main .c file here. For the purpose of the demo, I'd like to add some uh, counter that we could look at during this session. So I'll just uh, try to find that. Here we, are, we have, have the section for user code so I will uh, add a volat volatile uh, variable so I'm defining it there and then I'll just uh, increment counter here in the for loop so then I will need to recompile this but I can initiate the recompile already from the debugs debug view here so I can push this green uh, icon that says make and restart the debugger so I'll push that so we're actually switching back to the editor compiling linking automatically restarting the debugger and now we are back in the debug view so the next thing I want to look at is the uh, disassembly so I'll, I will open that window so if I uh, start here I can uh, I can step in the code just run step and you will see that you also step in uh, in the disassembly simultaneously. Uh, the other nice feature we have with uh, running free RTOS, for example, or, or some other RTOS, um, I mentioned that we enable the RTOS awareness plugin. So I can, for example, look at the running task. Uh, now we have not um, uh, really started uh, the application, so push go here and run it for a while uh, press break I can see uh, the tasks uh, I can see uh, what state they are in I could enable, enable also the stack um, uh, view here for, for those uh, so another thing worth mentioning is uh, the different types of breakpoints so depending on uh, what type of device you have, uh, you might um, be able to use uh, different types of breakpoints. So we do support, of course, uh, the normal code breakpoints. So if I want to set something here in main, perhaps here, I can just set a code breakpoint here. Uh, I can restart. Uh, I push go again. And of course, uh, it stops at the code breakpoint. Uh, but there are also other ways um, that you can use breakpoints. So, for example, we had uh, a counter that we added to the um, location here. Uh, I can highlight that one, right click, and as you can see, we have different options for breakpoints. So, 
uh, I will not uh, show show everything here, but um, just to mention that uh, you can use something like a data breakpoint uh, for a variable in this case, uh, meaning that the data uh, and, and watch point trace unit in, in the um, Vortex device will uh, be able to, to track any uh, read or writes to, that, to, to a specific memory location. In this case, it would be the memory location where the counter is. So if we would set a data breakpoint for, for the counter, we would see that uh, the debugger would break on any access to the counter. We could also then add uh, some um, match data condition uh, to only have a, a debugger break uh, when you, for example, write a certain value to, to the counter. Uh, you can also use data log breakpoints to just monitor uh, these accesses without breaking the system. Uh, another really nice feature. So for the, for the demo here, I'll just uh, add uh, a counter to the live watch. Click there and then you can see it pops up here in, in the live watch. So if I now run this a bit more, oh, I still have the code breakpoint. I'll remove that from the disassembly. Um, so you can see as I go, the counter updating the value. So the quick watch enables you to look at a variable as you run the application. Uh, we also have the timeline where you can uh, look at uh, interrupts. So uh, let's see, we can go back here and set again a breakpoint. I will restart this, uh, enable interrupt. Uh, so the timeline uh, enables you to look at different things like data logs, ITM, uh, ITM events and interrupts over time. So in this case, I'll just uh, look at the, the interrupts. So if, if I go here a few times, I still have my breakpoint. Uh, what you can see here is uh, that we have an interrupt here that has been logged by the Cortex device. I can use the plus and minus keys in, in the timeline to zoom in and zoom out. So I can also use the arrow keys for uh, stepping to the next interrupt, for example. I'm going to zoom in on that and you can see um, the exact time for how much time it took to, to perform that uh, interrupt routine. So I will disable this uh, and show you a few, a couple of other things before we end the demo. So one thing being the function profiler. So I can run my code once again and This will then give me the uh, amount of time uh, spent in each, each function. So this column here says uh, I have used 50% of uh, my time in, in this function. So this is a really useful tool uh, to, to enable you to perhaps put some ex extra optimization if you have a time uh, critical function that seems to be slow.